find where they have to stop in the top because then they're bearing all their weight on their newly reconstructed hip. Um, there are others that are kind of less bulky than that. That's just like a flat surface that sometimes they hook to the side of the tub and um, come down. This type, if you're, someone would have to remove their shower doors and use a shower curtain, which is not always a popular recommendation. Or if they have a shower, that would probably be easiest. But So you're going to have your patient walk with their affected leg first. sit this way on the tub, might need to scooch back, um, and basically, hopefully they'd be able to do this by themselves, but um, first, and I don't, I think this tub is smaller than a regular tub, so I'm going to have to measure it, but um, probably they would have good trunk stability, so you might not need a seat with the back, this one has a back that um, goes on, and I took it off because I'm going to have to, so I get over this way, kind of lean back, so I don't then or it's will be back to get my legs over. Turn it in. And then out. I was telling the other group, my uh, nephew's 26, and he's having one at the end of, I think the end of October, a hip replacement. He has a congenital problem, and his mother just had one, I think, like two years ago, so they have all the equipment already. Um, somebody want to sit down? That's, so if you're going to help your patient, I'll show you how to help the patient. <laughs> Kate was getting at me like, <laughs> So if you're going to help your patient, if you put cross your hands, you're going to put them sorry, right under the knees. That way you're um, preventing them from inter externally or internally rotating their hips or abducting. So that's kind of the reasoning for the position of the hands. So if you're going to tell your patient, we're going to slide you around and put your legs into the tub. So she might have to um, probably, here, let's do that again, because you probably need to scooch back a little first. And then, and I, holding up here, you can control the hips better than if you're doing it from down here. And if you need to, you can have them straighten their knees. They can straighten their knees, but they're not their hips. And then out the same way. And then you might also use this type of a bench for a patient that's had a stroke that can't maybe stand up and step in. So you would do the um, same thing. You would, have, you would have them sit and then say this is their affected side. They can scooch back. They should be able to lift this leg in and then they might have to use this arm to lift it up and in. Or if they couldn't do that, then obviously you or our caregiver would have to help them do that. And they might be one that need the back on the back of the tub.